Um, my name is Vicky. I'm a 26 year old back end developer in Brighton. I specialise in Magento and I work at an e commerce agency called Jean. Hi, I'm Chloe. I'm 22 from Brighton. Um, for the last couple of years, I have been working for a company, Jean Commerce, as well, um, as a certified front end Magento developer. Before we start, we've got loads of experience in coding, but no experience in giving talks, so please be nice to us. <laughs> Uh, so me and Chloe are still fairly near the start of our careers, but um, so we're not going to claim to be experts in climbing the career ladder. Uh, however, we've taken a few steps up it and we want to kind of share our experiences with you and hopefully give a bit of practical advice to anyone hoping to do the same thing. So before we start talking about our experiences, we thought we'd give you a little bit of information about our company, um, Gene Commerce. My boss is actually sitting in the audience, so we're going to start by saying Gene Commerce is an amazing company. But I'm not kidding, it is a really good company. Uh, we're a fast growing company and we've been going for about three years now. We are a certified Magento agency um, which build e-commerce websites and software for some great brands like Protein Wound and Hornby. For anyone that doesn't know, that basically means we, really, uh, we create awesome online websites. Uh, on top of that, we have an employee owned structure and our software was recently bought by a company in Silicon Valley. Um, We've also picked up a couple of awards and we've been on some really cool team outings. So that's enough about us, I think. Oh yeah, that's enough about Jean. Um, Let's talk about the awesome people that work there. Uh, like me. <laughs> okay, so, um, uh, so my, I think my generation was probably the first to grow up with the internet in our houses. We got our first computer when I was like eight. It looked a bit, a bit like that, uh, which is kind of different to the computers we use now. Um, and I was really good with them. I loved playing around on them, like just exploring, uh, typing in the command line, pretending I was a hacker. Uh, so I went on to, when I was around 14, started teaching myself HTML and CSS. Um, and it was kind of the fun of creating something from nothing, writing a bit of code and having something happen on the page, just super exciting. Uh, I went as far as making the website for my Halo 2 clan, which is super cool. <laughs> um, but at my school, uh, there wasn't really much of an emphasis on computers. I don't think they got how big the internet was going to be. Uh, so they kind of shifted the focus onto academic learning. And I ended up going to sixth form college to study HTML. Uh, sorry, HTML? <laughs> study that. I studied philosophy, English, history, classics. There's me. I uh, gave up HTML, actually. Stopped doing it because it seemed like a silly hobby. Uh, and from there, I went on to... Brighton, where I started studying philosophy at the University of Sussex. And I kind of knew quite early on that it wasn't right for me. I uh, didn't get on with it. I loved it in college, but there was something about like uni culture and all that kind of stuff that I didn't get on with. And I remember being in a lecture for philosophy of mind after about a year and a half and having this realization that my view of philosophy was taken to its extreme. The only thing you can be sure of is you can't be sure of anything. And after that, I was kind of sure I didn't want to be doing that there and I was, <laughs> Wasting my time, maybe a little bit. So I dropped out. Uh, and from there, I had a bunch of different jobs. I worked in call centers, pubs, kitchens, shops over about four or five years. Uh, I sometimes had two or three jobs just to pay my rent. It was super exhausting. I wasn't happy or creatively satisfied. Um, and I worked at this charity shop for about three years as paid staff. And after those three years, I kept thinking, again, this is something that's not really right for me. How about I start thinking about what is right for me? So I knew, like, obviously I was always into computers. I was really into video games, uh, like digital culture, internet art. So I thought maybe I could do something in that area, but I wasn't really sure what. Uh, but I remember my boyfriend, Sam, is a designer, and he does a little bit of code at his job. And I remember going to meet him off work and seeing him doing that and thinking back to when I wrote code when I was younger and how much fun it was and how exciting it was. And I thought, well, he's doing it for a job, so maybe I can too. Uh, so straight away, I jumped on Code Academy. I'm sure a lot of people here have heard of it. Um, it's a really good resource for a basic overview of learning code. I'd say if you want to actually learn how to implement code, uh, maybe look elsewhere for more resources like tutorials and things that you can make, ideas for things you can make, because otherwise you're just going to know a bunch of words and not know how to use them. Um, after a while of doing this, I decided it was time to quit my job, which was kind of crazy. Uh, I had no other job lined up and no savings. Don't really recommend anyone else do it. I had a bit of a mad one. 
uh, but <laughs> I did it anyway and decided to kind of devote myself full time to learning code and getting a portfolio together. Um, as I mentioned before, it's good to make things, some examples of stuff I made. I made a really stupid website for a fake business. Um, I know that's not a walrus, uh, it's a long story, uh, but anyway, yeah, made a bunch of games, card flipping games, stuff like that. Uh, games are really good for learning code because they get you to think about design and logic in different ways. Uh, so after that, I started thinking, well, it's time for me to start applying for jobs, which is super scary. Uh, applying for jobs in a new industry where you have no experience is very daunting, especially when you actually read job descriptions. They sound totally terrifying and unattainable, and you read them and think, well, I can't really do any of that, but you don't know how else to get in. Uh, and apart from that, uh, yeah, just I applied for one job, and I actually got a response, but... They asked for my portfolio and I was kind of too scared to send it to them because I thought it was really bad. So I just <laughs> ignored them, <laughs> a bit of self-sabotage there. Um, but yeah, after a while of doing this, I was kind of browsing through job websites as I'm sure experience anyone can relate to. And I found Creative Process, uh, which is Creative Digital Media Apprenticeships. And I always had this misconception that apprenticeships were school leavers, like 16 to 18 year olds and I was 24. Uh, so I didn't didn't think it was really possible, but apparently you can literally do them at any age. People in their thirties and forties do them. Um, so I signed up. I went along to an induction at the job centre, and when they were talking about like what the apprenticeships entail, uh, they mentioned Gene Commerce was hiring for junior developers, and they said that the apprentice who got the job a few years before uh, was actually now the one doing the interviews. So that kind of sounded like cool career progression, which I'd never had a chance to do in any of my other jobs. So I went for that. Um, and I got an interview. And I was pretty terrified because I hadn't had an interview in about three years. And I was sort of expecting real grown-ups to be asking me real questions. And I didn't really feel like I was a real grown-up. So I went along really, really over-prepared. But actually, the people interviewing me were Chloe and... <laughs> Dave, who's over there, <laughs> boy covered in tattoos. Uh, so it was really casual and informal and actually not that scary when I got there. Um, yeah, they were kind of really clearly more looking for someone that would fit into the team rather than someone that knows everything. Uh, so yeah, I, I got the job after two interviews and uh, had to do my apprenticeship, which is it's pretty straightforward. It's just like once a week you go into college and do social media, Photoshop, stuff like that. Um, and then the rest of the time you're actually working as part of a team in a real company and getting real experience, which is really, really amazing to do. Uh, so in July last year, I finished that and I'm now a full-time developer. I got to take the junior out of my email signature, which was pretty cool. Uh, and I get to do loads of really great work, really exciting projects um, with people I like. I get to go to conferences like Chloe and I went to a uh, Women in Technology conference last year and we're going again this year. Uh, and I guess what I'm trying to say is if you uh, like have something that you really want to do but you're not really sure and you don't feel qualified, you can actually qualify yourself. I dropped out of university, I don't have a degree, but I went on to do a job that I really love and has like a real sense of progression and achievement. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I have to say. I'm going to pass you over to Chloe now. Cool, so this is a photo of me, that curly-haired glasses little girl. Um, and I thought this would be a good place to start because I was about eight years old here um, and I got my first family computer. So I was into horses, but not a lot else. Um, and similar to what Vicky said, I've not been coding my whole life. I actually got into it by playing a game called Horseland. Um, and it was a MySpace type platform where you had your own portfolio and you could use basic HTML and CSS to change the way that your portfolio looked. And you could also upload your own images and people tended to manipulate them with Photoshop to make them seem a lot cooler than what they actually were. I remember that year, um, all the girls in my year were asking for their first phone or their first lot of makeup. And there I was asking for Adobe Photoshop and a graphics tablet. So I'd left school and I was 16 and I think if you ask any anyone at 16 what they want to do for the rest of their life they probably wouldn't be able to tell you um, and I was in the same boat I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do someone told me to think of something that I enjoy and base my A-levels around a career that I could possibly do 
somehow I come to the conclusion that I wanted to become a vet and I didn't really think about the fact that I'm completely petrified of blood and I don't like bones at all. Um, so I picked my A-levels around that. Uh, maths, chemistry, biology, and I actually did pick ICT. Um, once again, I, I don't really like science and I'm not very good at maths. So I completed my first year and no surprise, I failed pretty much everything except from ICT, which I did really well at. Um, I think it's always too important to pick things that you enjoy. I think for me that my failure in that first year was not down to the fact that I couldn't do them A-levels. I think it was down to the fact that I wasn't enjo enjoying what I was doing and therefore I wasn't putting in nowhere near as much effort as I should have been. But I'm not a quitter, so I dropped the one A-level that I did actually do well in, ICT, and carried on with my three other A-levels. Um, probably a silly move now, looking back. Um, and I got through my second year. I did pass everything, but there was no way that I could get into uni with my grades. <coughs> That's me in the centre. Um, so I entered what I call my limbo phase. Um, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I had no money, and probably worst of all, I was working as a dinner lady with a little hairnet in the kitchen serving kids food all day, um, which is not a career that I want to be doing. Pretty soon I woke up one day and I knew that I had to change what I was doing. Uh, my plans was to either reapply for uni or try and, oh, reapply for college or try and get into uni. But I'd already missed the deadline so I had about just under a year to play with. My friend actually mentioned to me that he was doing an apprenticeship in mechanics for Mercedes which at the time I thought was amazing. You know he was doing this certification, he was getting paid and he was really loving what he was doing. Um, so that's how I stumbled across the apprenticeship company. Um, so I went online and I was looking down the list of things and I noticed there was hairdressing, plumbing, electrician, chef, anything I could think of. Um, and they're all really good jobs but at the same time I didn't think any of them were for me. I've always been more of a creative person. Until I found a digital media apprenticeship and it was basically offering a job with no qualifications but you could have a go at everything. You could have a go at a bit of social media, a bit of design, a bit of coding. Um, so that is how I found my first apprenticeship. <laughs> I applied for the job with no qualifications and no portfolio. But I think I was quite over-enthusiastic and managed to get the job somehow. <laughs> um, so that was for a small company over in Shoreham. And to be honest, I thought I'd hit the jackpot. I was 18 years old and earning £400 a month. <laughs> when in reality, £400 it was not going to cover my rent and it wasn't going to cover cover the travel to get there. Um, so I had to keep my awful kitchen job, which I hated as well as my apprenticeship. But it wasn't all bad. I was kind of a jack of all trades at that job. Um, I got to try a bit of social media, like I mentioned, coding. Um, I got to answer the phones. And even though that doesn't sound like a fun thing to do, it was still good experience. But like I mentioned, it was a very small company, so I felt a lot of the time I was sort of teaching myself things. And again, that isn't a bad thing to do, but I felt like I wasn't learning at a quick enough pace. And I felt like I was probably not learning the best practices. And for me, that didn't sit very well. So I was there for about eight months and I was working proper hard, <laughs> um, both jobs. And two months before I was meant to finish my apprenticeship, um, I was actually watching the first half an hour of Wolf of Wall Street thinking that I could conquer the world. Um, when I get a phone call from my boss to say, actually, the company's going to go under and there was no way you could finish your apprenticeship. There's only one word that I could describe myself in that moment, and that was absolutely gutted. Um, all I could focus on was the fact that I was not going to finish my certification. And I think probably for about a week after, that's all I focused on. Um, but I took a step back, and I think this is something I probably need to do more often. And I said to myself that, yeah, I've been here nine months, and I didn't get what I set out to get. But hang on, actually, not only have I got a year's experience, which in my opinion is priceless, and I've gone to all these amazing conferences and meet, met all these amazing people, but it was sort of like a light bulb moment for me that I've tried all these different things and hang on, coding is a thing that I really enjoyed most out of everything I did try. Ah. 
So I entered my limbo phase again. I had no job and I was still working at the kitchen. But this time I knew what I wanted to do. Uh, I just didn't have a clue how I was gonna get into it. I think another thing for me is that I didn't feel confident enough. Like I mentioned, before I got my previous apprenticeship, I was doing a lot of self-teaching. And even when I was at the apprenticeship, I was doing a lot of self-teaching. <laughs> so I didn't feel confident in my skills. I had this theory that if I walked up to a developer, they would know everything about everything, which in reality is not true. My mum often says to me, and this is a little story, my mum often says to me that, Chloe, oh, my computer's broke or my printer's broke because you can code, can you come and fix it? And I have to explain to her that, mum, just because I can code and I work with computers does not mean that I know everything about computers and it certainly doesn't mean that I'm going to be able to fix your computer. But I had a lot of time spare in my limbo. Um, so I created my first portfolio. I was quite lucky in the fact that I was allowed to use some of the stuff that I created at my old apprenticeship. So my portfolio was already quite beefy and it quite had quite a varied sort of, it had a lot of different things to it. It had a bit of design and a bit of coding as well. The next step for me naturally was to apply for uni because I didn't know of any other option. I already tried my apprenticeship and that didn't really work for me. And I think it's important to state the fact that I had no qualifications to get into uni. All I had was my portfolio and less than a year's experience. But I actually got accepted for two unis, uh, one at Brighton to study digital media and one at Kent to study web design and development. So I'm at this crossroad and I'm not sure which uni to go to. Um, I actually went to a couple of the open days and I remember speaking to one of the lecturers over in Kent and I explained my situation to him and he actually turned around to me and said that if you've got this year's experience and you've got this portfolio, you're going to be better off going, trying to get a junior role or trying to get an internship or another apprenticeship as opposed to coming to uni. Um, and I wasn't really sure what to take of that. I asked him what he meant. And he explained that this industry is changing so rapidly that the course was already sort of a couple of years out of date. And not only that, but he was finding that a lot of his students were leaving uni and they were going up against these people that had completed these apprenticeships and had the experience and they weren't getting the jobs. Um, so I took quite a lot from that actually, but at the same time I'd already really tried the apprenticeship route and I didn't think it was going to work for me. So I accepted my place at Brighton Uni. A couple of months before I was due to start uni, I got a phone call from a lovely woman called Donna at Creative Process. I don't know if any of you know her. Um, and she asked me, I don't know where she got my number from, but she asked me if I was interested in doing another apprenticeship. So I explained my situation and I explained what happened the first time around and I said that I probably wasn't ever gonna be interested again. Um, to which she gave me a couple of words of wisdom. Um, there's no harm in going and you've got nothing to lose. And I think that's so true, especially with interviews. Um, even if you're going, but you don't want the job or if you just go for the experience, I'm sure everyone can learn something from doing an interview and it's something that you're gonna need over and over again. So I went along. So <laughs> if you could all just picture what you think is a stereotypical developer, it would probably look a little like this um, and that's what's happened like I turned up to this job interview and it was in a house in the middle of nowhere and there was four guys that looked something like this um, and I walked in and I actually walked straight back out again after saying hi <laughs> I knew I knew straight away that that wasn't the place I wanted to be it wasn't creative it didn't inspire me and I didn't think I was going to be pushed there um, and I think that's an important thing to take just because you get offered an interview or just because you get offered a job even if it feels like it's not right for you then I don't think you should take it and you can do better and there's always something else out there so I got a phone call from Donna about a week later to ask how it went uh, and I explained that I think I'd probably set a world record at the fastest interview in the world um, 
to which she laughed and actually turned around to me. I couldn't shake her off. She turned around and asked um, if I wanted to go to another interview um, from an award-winning company called Jean Commerce. And I think that word initially, award-winning, really stuck with me. Knowing that I was going to uni bright to Brighton, uh, knowing that I was going to uni in Brighton as well, I knew that I needed to start getting my name out there and start meeting a couple of people in the industry. So I thought there's no harm in going to another interview. So that's when I got interviewed for Jean. Um, so I'm walking along to this interview and I've still got this image in my head of this developer. Um, and I'm quite confident about myself. I'd read the job description and I, honestly, I didn't think I was going to get the job. I didn't think I was qualified enough. It comes back down to this confidence thing again. Um, and I'd already got my place at uni, so I knew that either way I was, I was probably going to go to uni at this point. So this is what I've got in my head when, in actual fact, <laughs> this is the crazy group of people that I got to meet. And... Like Vicky said, I was uh, interviewed by Dave, who's sitting at the back. Um, and instantly I felt at ease being interviewed by someone who was telling me about his apprenticeship and comparing to me what had ha actually happened with my apprenticeship. And, you know, listening to his story and listening to all the amazing things that this company had achieved instantly inspired me. And I knew that this, this is the place I wanted to be. So after a couple of interviews, um, Jean actually offered me the position and there was no doubt in the fact that I, this is what I wanted, so I accepted the position. I did defer my year at uni, just in case it didn't go right again, um, but this time it did actually work out. I often get asked if I ever regret not going to uni, um, and to me, there's no, there's no doubt in my mind that I don't regret it. Yes, I missed out on three years of partying, but at the end of the day, I've not got any debts. Um, I feel like I probably learned a lot more in a year of doing my apprenticeship and working at a company than I would have done at uni. Um, I'm specialised now in development, which if I'd done a digital media degree, I probably know a little bit of everything, but not a lot of one thing. I've got three years experience in the industry, which probably, well, in my opinion, is definitely priceless. You can't buy that. Um, and I've had the opportunity to attend some amazing events. <coughs> Yay. <laughs> <coughs> so I've got my job. Uh, I landed my dream job. But there was no way that I was going to stop there. Um, so what have I done? Obviously, I've completed my apprenticeship probably about two years ago now, maybe. Um, the next thing for me to do was to do my certification. So I'm quite proud to say that I'm one of only a handful of certified Magento female developers in the world, which is pretty cool. Um, I've been to several events, uh, a couple in London, like Vicky mentioned, I went to one last year, which I'm attending again in a couple of months. And my biggest achievement, I think, since being at Jean, I got flown out to Las Vegas this time last year to attend probably the biggest Magento conference in the world. Uh, that's, that's a lovely photo of us, all drunk. Um, it definitely was the hardest week of my life, but at the same time, it was so rewarding and it was the best week of my life and I could not thank my company enough for that. I have an opportunity to teach others in my job role. Um, we take on apprentices all the time and being giving back to the community is something that I really enjoy. We have these quotes on around our office, and I think we have about 10 quotes, and I could, probably couldn't tell you what half of them say, but there's one that always sticks with me, and it says that if you get that Monday morning feeling, then you're in the wrong job. Basically, it means that if you go into work on a Monday and you wanna, you'd rather get hit by a bus than go into the work, <laughs> then you're probably in the wrong career. Um, and that's something that I can honestly say. I've never felt a gene except from maybe this morning when I was petrified for giving this talk. <laughs> um, just because my first apprenticeship didn't go well, the second one's been absolutely amazing. Um, and I think that reinstates the fact that some jobs just aren't right for some people, but at the same time, they could be right for someone else. There's no stopping me. Um, my goals for the future, I want to progress my career and advance my coding ability. Um, another thing I really want to 
push myself more into the community and try and make a name for myself in both the Magento world and the local community. So what am I actively doing? No one's going to do it for me. I need to get up and do it for myself. Uh, I'm here today to give this talk to hopefully some of you out there might be inspired. Um, I've also been attending and hosting Code Bar. I, I know a couple of you go. Um, oh yeah, for those of you that don't know, Code Bar is a sort of weekly uh, workshop meetup type thing for teaching code and programming to women, LGBT, and people who are underrepresented in the industry. One thing I've noticed at Code Bar is that there's so many people out there trying to get into this industry, and they have the portfolio and they have the skills, they probably just don't have the experience. I was talking to one of the girls, Zara, um, the other day and she was telling me about the fact that she's been going to these interviews but in actual fact people are email, e emailing her to say she hasn't got the job but they're not giving any feedback, they're not giving any feedback on her interview technique or her portfolio. Uh, and that's actually something that we should be doing better at. Uh, like in the industry already like if you apply for a job and you have an interview and the employer doesn't tell you what you did wrong then you're not going to know and you're going to keep applying for jobs and maybe keep doing the same thing wrong not that you're even doing anything wrong because as I said earlier job descriptions can be really really off-putting um, like you'll see it be like like I was just sort of amateur starting out have really basic knowledge of code but really really eager to learn and you see pretty much every job advertised for developers saying stuff like uh, I'm a, we're, we're looking for a genius developer to join a team of hero programmers to change the world. Uh, does this sound like you? Email us. And it doesn't sound like anyone, but that's what most of them look like when you're an amateur. Or, not even an amateur, but like, to me now, that's what they look like. Uh, and I think one of the secrets that they don't tell you when you're on the other side of the glass, like I've had the opportunity to interview people at Jean, and when I'm interviewing somebody, I don't think, what's this guy's PHP like? or does he know knockout JS? I'm just trying to figure out if I like him or not. Uh, and <laughs> I think this is something that you don't you don't get when you're looking for a job. Is they want to like you, and that's sometimes more important than if you know 50 different programming languages. They'll probably have a place for you. I would say you should apply for jobs, even if they're not like advertising a specific role. Um, you could probably still find something. We've definitely hired people at Gene that we weren't advertising for, but we like them anyway. Um, so I guess I hope that somebody can take something away from this, like mostly just that, like I said before, if you're not qualified to do something, you can qualify yourself and no one's going to do it for you. I used to think I was the laziest person in the whole world and I would never do anything in my career because I was too lazy, but uh, like I said, I had a mag on and just figured out something I wanted to do and did it and I honestly think if I can do it, then so can anyone. I totally agree. I think for me, there were several limbo points in my life when I didn't know what I wanted to do and I felt like giving up. Um, but you can figure it out, whether that's going to uni, getting an internship, doing an apprenticeship. I think most importantly, it's always good to just be happy in what you're doing. I think if you're happy, then you're going to succeed. I don't know if I'll be coding for the rest of my life, but I know at the moment that this is what makes me extremely happy, so that's what I'm going with. My mum often says to me that you went through a hard time in your life and you're quite lucky because you've fallen on your feet and you've, you've got a great job. And I turn around to her and say, Mum, no, I haven't fallen on my feet and got myself a great job. I've worked hard and got myself a great job, um, which I really think I have. Another thing is, like, you don't need qualifications to get into this industry. All you need is drive and ambition and the enthusiasm, and that's what employers are looking for. Phew. Um, cool. So we've put up our contact details in case anyone wants to get in contact. Um, if anyone has any questions, we're more than happy to answer them. Thank you. <laughs>